Okay. All right. So let's go to the next thing here. Let's go. And people weren't such dumbasses, such dumb bitches spreading such stupidity around. They sent me for you, girl. Trigger warning. Let's talk about trans women using women's restrooms. Not a full set being transphobic. Girl, you look like you ain't safe in the men's restroom. You are a lace bust down away from a chop for drag's realness. No, baby, no. The call is coming from inside the house. Yes, inside the glass house. You know me, I'm born a biological man. I should not be on a woman's team. I'm, we're just naturally gonna beat them. If it was you versus a female athlete in any sport, my money would go on the female athlete. <laughs> Babe, I'm a man at the end of the day. I've said it loud and clear. For you to be so much of a man, you stay in trans people's business. In fact, the only time I hear you even talk about men is when you're discussing the men who don't want you. So y'all, this man just try to basically say, oh, when we hang out, can you trim those nails a little bit? Because you don't fit their standards of what a man should be. Ironic. Oh, well, I'm talking about some lady was like, you should put some pasties, Perfect. bitch, pasties. Do I look like a lady? You know good and goddamn well that ain't nobody think that you was a woman. And they damn sure ain't seen no titties. Up here, come and talk about how I want to be a damn colored woman. Like, all right, baby, I, you know, cool. But baby, don't nobody want to be that, so let's not go there. Oh, you anti-black as well. Why do white people adopt black children? I got a question. Why are there so many black children that need to be adopted? Because clearly the people who are supposed to are not doing it. Let white people adopt whoever they want. As long as they want to give this child the right life, because bitch, you ain't. Everything I've heard you say and seen you do, I've already seen it from black women or black queers. You just another one of them that want to steal our rhythm without acknowledging our blues. You get your melanemic adjacent underdeveloped ass on this internet. Mimicking black culture, black women, trans and black queers with the unmitigated gall to say that a whole community of people want to be like you. Baby, you don't even want to be like you. And to be fair, the nails are about 95% of your personality. The other 5% is Afrocentric femininity. But you've always admired Afrocentric women. And you secretly want to be one, don't you? But all that internalized transphobia and lack of curves leads you to believe that that will never happen for you. Therefore, you're just going to hate the people who have made it happen for them. I'm not sure if you're extremely ignorant and didn't realize that you were using black culture for your own gain while being anti-black, or if you're just delusional and need psychiatric help. But either way, it's not a good look. Oh yeah, I see them numbers dropping over there, and I know you've seen them numbers dropping too, but just like throwing a pile of shit into a dumpster fire, you made it worse. Now, I know a lot of people have unfollowed you and they will continue unfollowing. But I suggest y'all keep your eyes on this one. I got the feeling that somebody going to be popping up in poom poom shorts with they chonklas. Yeah, <laughs> I just can't stand up bitches, y'all. But whether or not you really want to be a woman, you owe respect to the trans women and trans femmes who paved the way so that you could be able to go out the house in those nails and make it back home. But the only question I have is for Mark Jacobs. Hi, Ryan. Just wanted to give you a hello. And uh, we're all ready. The nails are popping. And uh, of course, you are my inspiration. So, Why did you decide to endorse and align yourself with this content creator out of all of the people who wear stiletto nails that you could have been inspired by? Why Ryan? Are you supporting Ryan because you're anti-Black and transphobic as well? I'm sure all of your customers would love to know. Whoa. So yesterday when I, I mean, third Friday, when I posted that video, I posted it and I, 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 my caption was that it was a lot to unpack. Well, the video, after I posted it, it went viral. It went into a, a, the stratosphere, which I had never seen Ryan uh, before. Um, and uh, a fairy puss, aka Brie. Um, I, we follow each other, and I see the things that she posts. But I saw she posted a lot of other trans women posted it. You know, I didn't know anything about it. I just saw it, and I was just like, "Wow!" And then it just came into a, it just came into a match because Ryan came in. He was defending his name. 
And he was saying, bitch, you ignorant asshole. <laughs> <laughs> bitch, you don't know me, girl. You posting this stuff, girl, honey. That was an edit together video, bitch. La, 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 la. And Bree was like, girl, yes, I put that shit together because I've been following that queen and that queen. And I'm like, well, girl, what's going on? So I end up cussing and fussing, honey. We, So me being the Libra that I am, I, I, I work in fairness and justice. So Ryan had inboxed me before I saw the inbox. And I had, you know, I had already posted. New, I came on my YouTube and we were carrying on and fussing and cussing. Punk out! All the shit. Y'all know what happened Friday, bitch. It's, it's <laughs> but after I got off, you know, he inboxed me again. And then we were talking and I was like, oh, shit. So I said, well, let's bring this. Let's bring it all. So I have both parties involved. Well, wait in a minute. It. You forgot his fierce move. He created a YouTube channel, and, bitch. And sent me $20. $20 so and, he can light and, you like up. And we went, bitch, and I tore him up. <laughs> he cussed me out, bitch. He said, sir. Sirs. Sirs. You damn punk. <laughs> he said, first he said, I created this channel just so I can come in and say this. To you, sirs. <laughs> <laughs> bitch, you know I eat shit like that for breakfast, bitch. But I have Bree here, aka Fairy Puss. Hey, and I have Ryan here. Now let's put no more. It's yeah, gonna yeah, have to make it right. wide. Come on, make it. all right. Now put this, put us on the top, put them by each other. They need to be side by side. No, no, move Fairy Puss. No, 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 no more. Put it. Put us up here. Well, leave us right there. Let it be right there. I can't. I can't do it like that. All right, that's fine. All right, y'all. <laughs> the, the, the field of dreams are open. Hi, Ryan. How y'all doing? I'm so glad that we're here in a better space, than honey. We can have a better, a better, a better. Yes. Instead I of, agree. instead of little punk, little, uh, instead of that, you know. Yes. Bree, Hey, hey Bree. Hey. How y'all doing? Hey, Craig. Hey, oh, how are you? Hey. How are you doing? So. Hi. We have the floor here. We clearing the air. Oh, baby, this this gonna be real quick for me. I don't know what Ryan then said to y'all about cut and paste and delete and edit and all that. Of course, I cut and paste and delete and edit. Ryan, quit. Don't don't act like that, honey. It's called TikTok. The video has to be a certain amount of time. If I wanted to dissect each and every piece of your videos, baby, the ones that you deleted, if I wanted to dissect any piece of those videos. If I wanted to dissect more of those videos, I could have done hours of content on you, but you ain't that relevant to me. I want to clarify real quick to Maddie. I never followed Ryan and I still don't follow her. I didn't know who she was until I made the video. Like I said, the girl sent me for you and they showed me one video. The girl sent me one video, the one that everybody was responding to. Me being the published psychologist that I am, who specializes in gender and sexuality, I did my due diligence and I seen all of those videos that you deleted. That's why there's so many pieces from various occasions. Miss Thang, you know that you are problematic, honey. I don't know what kind of white woman tears you gave Craig and or Maddie, but that shit ain't gonna work on me, Miss Thang. We got too much shit to be worried about out here than you trying to get a TikTok following by imitating black women while being transphobic and anti-black. You're done. Go ahead, Maddie, Ryan. Maddie done already gave examples of you being a since you asked, I'm not. Maddie done already gave you examples of you being impulsive. You have admitted to being impulsive. Even on her live, you were being impulsive. You are an impulsive queen who makes statements and put them out into the ethernet. And these statements and these comments will last forever. Meanwhile, you're retorting Republican rhetoric, anti-black, transphobic, Republican rhetoric, while you walking around prancing like a fairy. And if it wasn't for trans women, trans women of color specifically, you probably wouldn't have the right to do it. Literally, it used to be illegal. Okay. So let me start with my fame, the cloud, none of that came from these topics. Girl, don't nobody give a fuck Black. about none of that. Am I going to be able to speak or am I not? Wait, wait, okay. Bree, 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 let, let Ryan have his, let, let Ryan have his say, because I want to, I want to know what's going on. So can we go get to a place here? So let's do it, Ryan. Right. Let, let's go with what you said. You didn't know me until they sent you my videos, correct? 
you claim to be, you know, have your degree in psychology or whatever, baby, you've never sat down. You don't know. Girl, you're not, you're not going to invalidate. You're not going to invalidate a black trans woman while you're on a black trans woman's platform. Nothing about please, me. Please, one at a time. Please, everybody, everybody, please, one at a time, one at a time, one at a time. Yes, I'm not going to go back and forth. You're not going to invalidate my question. Not only do I have degrees, but I am black and trans history. Okay, that doesn't make you right. It makes you more ignorant. Yeah, let me let me let me say this. I want Ryan to. I know you don't agree with everything he's saying, free, but let him speak because he did okay. wait. He did right. wait. So let's no, let's trying, let's give no, him his trying chance. To invalidate me though. That's that same Republican white girl, melanate, unmelanated, motherfucking white adjacent called Cassidy bullshit that it's I'm talking about. Look, no, you claiming your degree? Yeah, yeah, shit is your all these names. Names. This is what I mean. This is the problem right here, and this is what I speak about. Because I'm tired of people this like you. Behavior. No, no, no. I'm this tired of people like you. Think one that at a time. Your word is what matters, and you're all high and mighty, my love. You are not right. You're very ignorant and you're very wrong. You're loud and wrong. That's what you are. Okay, because you seem to think you have me all figured out. You don't know me from a hole in the wall, like I said. You don't know my background. You know nothing about where I'm from, nothing. Who my family is, nothing. You know not a thing. What you know is the color of my skin. I wear long nails and I, I make the videos that I do that I did not gain any clout from. I just started these videos about a couple of months ago. Been in the 10 million rankings and up before that, years. So my love, your story is fucked up. Um, the video you made, taking a bunch of videos, some of them, the one where I'm talking about dumb shit and all this shit, my love, don't even got nothing to do about trans and none of that. You literally made a storyline. You took the time out your day to make a storyline about me to prove your point. Okay, cool. But what I'm here to tell you is your point is not only ignorant, irrelevant, you're very wrong. And I hope that you take this time and you put it to yourself of what you do at work because maybe you'll do it better. Because let me tell you, you do hard. Okay, you're doing a horrible job. I would never want you to be my psycho uh, psychologist, psychiatrist, whatever it is that you said. Because my love, you'd be having me. I don't know. <laughs> Ryan, my question for you is: Is there anything that Bree said in her response video, or anything that you've heard from anybody else in response to what you said that you that kind of gave you pause to make you say, "Oh, well, maybe." Well, nothing that made me say maybe no. What took me back was the um, perpetrating, you know, the, the black culture thing. Because first of all, I'm born and raised in the Bronx. I'm from New York, my love. And you already know, New York is the hood, okay? Unless you're in Manhattan with the white bitches, you are in the hood probably, most likely, unless you're in Throgs Neck, the far ends. We are from the hood. So sitting here talking about I want to, um, copy black culture or any of that. Why? Why is that? I want to make. I want to know what makes you think that exactly. Okay. That's well, what I want to know. All right. So let's explain why people would say you, Ryan, as a. Now we having a. We're having a very. Now, now Bree, we gonna have a very logical conversation, right? And we we ain't gonna fuss. Let's let's tell you why. As black people, the things that that we have been labeled ghetto for. Get me out here, Chris. Go ahead. I'm ready. The things that we have been labeled ghetto for, like long nails, uh, certain long, hairstyles, certain hairstyles, long, long weeds, certain wardrobes, certain clothing, wardrobes, mannerisms, jewelry. You know, you know, this has been uh, stapled on us as black people. It's been a scar, and and labeled as ghetto, and the, and these things have kept us out of quote unquote normal society because corporate America, corporate America, because we're too ghetto, you know, to that's too ethnic, too, that's ethnic, too urban, you know, too urban to to be in these spaces. So when someone who is not black or or is not you know black or brown. And they come in and they doing these things, and I, I, I'm 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 being in my calm mode now because I want to make sure that I get this out right. For example, Cardi B, which she's also from the Bronx, am I right? Right. And Cardi B is where when. When a black girl has been doing it, it's been, you know, oh my God, this is too much. But when Cardi B has done it, it's just like, it's too much, but we can tolerate that. Yes, girl, because, ooh, 
um, it's it's like it's the thing. Like it, it's it's no longer the ghetto that the, the ghetto that y'all receive. Like the ghetto that you guys get. Like the nail that y'all don't get the same ghetto that we get. Yeah, yeah, okay, so here's what I want to say. So my my thing is this. Put it up there, Mo. Um, when when we're talking about long nails, the origins of that are Africa, Egypt, and or China, and specifically with China, it's the Ming Dynasty. So we can't say that it's it, that it originated in the Bronx. And I understand that your argument was, well, you know, they must not know the Bronx, and you know, this, that, and the third happens in the Bronx. You mentioned something about the Bronx and, you know. Originated in the Bronx. I'm sorry? I never He's said it was originated in the Bronx. Or New York. The Bronx is a ghetto culture. That's what I said. Or, or New York. Yeah. But, but my point is, we had to come up with the Crown Act because black women in particular, and I'm sure it happens with black men who may have locks and things like that. We had to come up with, we had to come up with the Crown Act. Are you familiar with the Crown Act? No. So the Crown Act had to be passed because black women in particular couldn't wear protective styles, whether it's locks, whether it's an Afro, whether it's her hair natural, you know, whatever it is, because it was, it was just too much for white people. It was, it was not professional. It was not corporate. So similarly, those nails that you're wearing that have origins back to the main dynasty in Egypt and Africa, Michael Kors. Oh, I'm sorry. Who was it? Mark Jacobs. Mark Jacobs who's right. now, doing these same things with these nails, what I would need for him to do is give permission, uh, give, give, give credit rather to where that comes from. Because what I can tell you, and I can guarantee you five years ago, a black girl couldn't even go into his retail store with those nails and think she could sell pants because they would have been see seen as ghetto. She wouldn't have even gotten an interview. And that's five years ago. So we know what would have happened 15, 20 years ago. So again, when black girls do it or when black people do it, it's considered too ethnic, too urban. But when someone who is not black do, does it, it's avant-garde. Kim Kardashian with the, with, the, with the cornrows. Baby, black people have been wearing cornrows since the beginning of time. Travis yeah. Travis, <laughs> Travis Kelsey, this football player. Is he football? Because, you know, I'm a fag, so I don't follow sports. <laughs> but Travis <laughs> Kelly now wears a haircut similar to mine. And they, now they want to call this a Travis Kelly? Kelsey, yeah. Kelsey. They want to call it. No, this is not. So all we're saying is oftentimes things that we've popularized become mainstream. Even when you're talking about urban wear, urban wear, like the way that black and brown people have been dressing in the hood. For decades, it's now you see it on the runways in Paris now, and they don't call it urban. What do they call? It? They call that shit. Uh, uh, they they they'll call that shit uh, boho or some shit like that. Like, girl, cut it out, stop. You know what I mean? So that's all it is it, for me. No right, and I understand the right, perception. Can I, can I piggyback off of that real quick because yeah. that's where my frustration comes from. Um, and that's why, and that's a part that leads to why I was triggered. And I do apologize for reacting the way that I did. I reacted out of pure emotion, honey, but that's part of the reason that I have a platform. Um, and that's the reason why I do what I do. I'm very passionate about what I do. And it's very triggering to me when I'm out here, not only fighting for the rights of people like you on social media and in real life, I have dedicated my career to that. You being a person of less melanin, you being a person who could even pass for white, knowing that the way that I look, people will invalidate my credentials all the time. And then here you come telling me that I'm not good at what I do and you don't even know what I do. You didn't know if I was a psychologist, a psychiatrist, a psychopath. You don't know my story. I actually took the time. Yes, I did. I took the time because before I said that I was going to say anything about this young person, I was going to take the time. I wasn't going to look at just one video. I was sent one video, like I said. And I took the time to really get into it. And I wasn't going to respond at first because honestly, I feel sorry for you. Because I know that you are undereducated and you seem content. You seem willful in your ignorance. The things that Craig is saying to you, the things that I said to you in that video were not the only people who said that thing to were not the only people who said those exact comments to you. And in fact, some of those comments came from white people. 
And you even made a video addressing the fact that white people were calling you out for being anti-black. And you don't see the problem? I just don't see how that results to me being anti-black. But, but, but Bree, may I ask this question? I'm always going to be devil's advocate here. This obviously is Ryan's identity. Like, this is obviously his identity. So when we have people who are raised in a certain place and they come mm. from a certain place and this is a normalcy for them, what do we have these people do? First of all, what we what they do, what people in the public spotlight do, people who are successful, people outside of Mark Jacobs, what, what they do is they respond, they listen to the audience that they've offended. Mm -hmm. And when they're successful, they don't stick to their willful ignorance. I know we have these conversations about council culture all the time, but the people who get counseled are the people who really counsel themselves. Maddie has made missteps. I've made missteps. I'm not perfect. I'm not trying to say that I'm perfect, but am I a good psychologist? No, I'm a great one. Excellent. In fact, again, Black History and Trans History for Published Psychology by the American Psychological Association. Now, so, what, what, okay. what, ultimately, what I, what I think anybody has to do is what everybody does in these situations, even though P. Diddy failed at doing it, you need to apologize. And if you want to be successful, you you need to be empathetic. We're not asking you. We're we're not asking you if you're imitating black culture. We know that you aren't. To piggyback off of what Craig said about the Ming Dynasty and about Egypt, yes, that's that's where that's where it comes from, from from an ancient standpoint. That's where it comes from the the first recorded history that we know of. But in modern society, in modern day, your Cardi B's. Your your Nicki Minaj's, your everybody else with with the stiletto nails, honey. One of the first celebrities to popularize that was Coco from SWV in the '90s, and since then it had become a part of hip hop culture. I don't wear stiletto nails, but I know this. Why don't you? And that's the problem. And, and also in terms of like the origins of those nails, it was a sign of wealth and privilege. Because if you were able to wear those nails, it meant that you did you weren't relegated to manual labor. Bro, right. You can you don't see a broke bitch with these. <laughs> <laughs> so that but I wanna know, I wanna know this. And and I think I think that this is a valid question that I have. I wanna know what do what do we want him to do? Well, let, well let do we say, want him to take the nails off? Like because that's a part no, of no, him. No, no, no. no. That was for for me that that was never about the conversation. I'm I'm actually I actually took it light on Ryan co compared to what I normally give to people who give that energy because Ryan is a part of community and I do fight for the community and honestly what I said in that video I meant I I want you to educate yourself love that's all I, I want you to educate yourself with with power comes responsibility yes you have, yes you have a huge platform but. I'm Open to educating myself. Now, I will never sit here and apologize for being who I am. That will never happen. That's what, not what I'm... That, that's, it's if, not going to happen. I'm, if you, I'm explaining if you right now. My what I'm, no, I, you've been talking for a very long time. Let me say my piece because it's been on my mind. I'm not going to apologize for being myself because this is who I was before I got on this camera. This is not who I dogged myself up to be to get on this camera. You understand what I'm saying? So when you say what you're saying, that's why I say it's very inaccurate. You know what I'm saying? Unfortunately, yes. The You know, the origins of the nails, they come from Egypt. I can agree to that. I can say the origin came from wherever. But what I'm not going to say is I'm inspired by what I'm not inspired by because who I was inspired by, my story with my nails, is my grandma who I grew up with, okay? She had her long nails. And that is a light-skinned Puerto Rican. She's not by blood, but that was like my, my blood sister's grandma, okay? That's not the point. The point is that is my example. That is my inspiration with all of this. I always loved it. I owe, you know, that's just been me. Um, and yeah, that, that's my part there with that. I, I think, I, 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 would not. I, I think Ryan, I think Ryan all too, it's not just the nails. I think that when we saw pieces of the video, 
which which was which blew me back that had me going was the parts of um of of uh, that that did seem transphobic you know and it did seem like that there were things that were there were transphobic and we and, and we as a community work so much better together right and if we have a like craig is a gay man i'm a trans person and our our views and opinions don't necessarily always align with each other with each other's however we know that the important thing uh, for the strength in our community is to be bonded with stuff yeah. together, especially during this election time. That's that don't give a fuck if we white, gay, or black, gay. Bitch, we gay, we getting ran over. And so, and all four hundred and thirty-five seats are, are, are up for re-election this election. And so, there were pieces in the video where, where when you saying about trans women um, going into the bathroom, whatever, right. but. Here's here's where you have the floor. Now, now, Bree, I'm gonna let him have the floor a little bit. Here's where you have the floor to talk about those videos that were put together. Okay, because the video where I spoke about the trans women, when I put in quotations like that, using the bathroom, had the video just played out probably a second or more. I go into explaining how the man recently, who I'm not sure if we all know about or not um decided that he wants to slap a wig on and pretend to be a trans woman that's exactly what he did trans woman because he was not a trans woman that was a man that decided to put the wig and go in and harass whoever he harassed in the bathroom or did whatever he did i'm not sure of the exact i did not have an example of what i was saying in the video but if you listen to the video the video clearly says what it says um and i went on to explaining how this is why I personally feel like it is not um, a bad thing. I'm not sure exactly what I said, but this is the idea. Um, that basically trans women and trans people in general should have their own space to use the bathroom. Um, I don't feel like it's dehumanizing. I don't feel like it's any of that. I feel like the same way they fought for the name trans women right y'all deserve your own space and i think i also include in that video about the sports i just genuinely feel like that because being that you know that first of all we got to make sure everybody is comfy it ain't just us so that's why i say sometimes like there's ways that i just see it as narcissistic sometimes when i hear some people say certain things because it's like you don't seem to understand or want to understand how women might feel, or even, you know, you never want to understand how men might feel. It's just, I try and think in the middle because we all need to be happy at the end of the day. It ain't just you, your group, your sexuality, your, it, it's not. We all have to be together on this planet. So that be my standpoint with a lot of these videos. It's trying to get the equality for everybody and not just the LGBT or trans people because I'm part of the LGBT. And I don't say that there's enough voices like that. I, and, and here's the thing. I don't think I, I see where the where your intentions are great with that. But when we start talking about making things easy for people that made things hard for us, we got to we got to step back with that because oh. this this is our, this is their world. We just in here so and, and, and our existence already makes them feel some type of way. Anyway, I just posted a video yesterday of me saying that I'm a transgender woman. I said I am a transgender woman. I said I am not a female. I am not a female. I am not a female. I'm, I'm going to repeat it again. I am not a female. I am a transgender woman. Do you know that there were women that still came up under there and were angry with me because I said woman at the end? So the whole point of the situation is even with me denouncing a uh, 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 stating I am not a female was not enough. We will, it will, we will never be able. We us being here makes them uncomfortable, regardless. For those of for those that don't want us here, right. us being here makes them uncomfortable, regardless. It just makes them uncomfortable, however it is. Right. Do mm -hmm. I feel like that we need to have? Um, a, a bathroom for trans people. For our own, I feel like that we should have gender neutral bathrooms. Oh, so I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, I don't, I don't, and I don't mind us having gender neutral bathrooms. I don't mind us having spaces for us as trans people 
on our own. I don't mind. I'm one of those that don't mind that. There are other trans people that say, hey, well, let's blend. I think that we should be, let's blend in. Let's, you know, let's this. And I'm okay with that too, but I'm all right with us having our own place. Now, you know, as a gay man, uh, excuse me, uh, do you identify as a gay man? Yes. Uh, and may I ask your pronouns? Are they he and him? He him, yes. Okay. So you as a gay man with nails, flamboyant, because you, you you flamboyant, honey, you give, you flamboyant. You know that sometimes you've walked in a room and your presence just alone has made them uncomfortable and you're living your life. See, yes, but I am a little bit of a different person when it comes to that. I don't give a damn. <laughs> Me, I strictly don't give a damn. I walk in the barbershop like this. I go to the straight club. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to make my way in and uh, you're going to have to, you know, if you want me gone, you gonna have to, you're going to have to bury me because it's just. But, no but, way but, but what, but what I'm saying is. And some of, and in a, in a bit of the part of your conversation is just like, well, we just thinking of, we try, I'm trying to make it comfortable for all areas of, of, of the situation. Right. And you can't think you can think about it like that. But you got to understand that it's just going to be uncomfortable because you're you exist. I want to know, Ryan, how old are you? Twenty five. Twenty five. And I'm not being funny when I say this. Bring back me up. Your frontal lobe just opened. Literally. Just the been. frontal lobe just opened at twenty five. So and I say that in love and I'm saying to you that at twenty five, you may not hear what we're saying. You may not agree with all that we're saying. Because you haven't had enough lived experiences. And this is not me saying, oh, you younger than me. You don't know shit. This is not that at all. I'm willing to bet that in a handful of years, probably around the time you're 30, because there's a shift that happens when we, when we turn 30. Yeah. When you turn 30, I think you because this, vi this video will live in infamy. And I just posted a video from us doing City Winery the other day. And I said the sheer fact that a gay man and a trans woman are sitting here hosting this show and it's it goes viral every single time we sit down here. It's changing how the community and the world sees the relationship between a gay man and a trans woman. You couldn't have told me 10 years ago. Well, not 10, because I've known you about 10 years. Mm -hmm. You couldn't have told me 25 years ago that I would be this close to a trans person because my, my own internalized homophobia wouldn't have allowed it at that time. And so we're now just seeing friendships between gay men and trans women or trans people out in the open because these kinds of friendships only happen in the dark yeah. away from people because it was, Oh no, I don't, I don't want to be around no, around no, no tranny. Right. They, they weird that I'm not that gay. Yeah. So what I'm saying to you is there are going to be parts of you, parts of this conversation that are going to creep up on you and you're going to say, Oh, that's what they were talking about. And not to say that you're going to agree with everything that we're saying. No, because I because be moments because I listen, here's the thing. And I want to say this because we got one more person that we got to get to because they, they're in another country and we got to get them because it's late. Here's a, here's the thing, Bree. Now I have to ask you this and I'm devil's advocate here. Th this is me being devil's advocate. Now you did piece together those videos. And in you piecing together those videos, I was thrown back from what I saw. I I I I didn't attack Ryan. I just reposted what you posted, and I was saying that you know I. I uh, but we Ryan and I got into a, a heated situation, but those videos were pieced together. Mm -hmm. And in some of those videos that were pieced together, when I'm looking at them, now I'm just being devil's advocate here. When I was looking at them, I was like, oh shit. I understood a couple of the things that he was that he was saying. Some of it I did because I was like, okay, well, that shit, that was one of my views on it. Like I feel I do feel that the trans girls should have their own bathroom. I, I do feel that. Um, and then I saw him now the part. Where he was talking about the uh, the adopting black children and calling us colored. <laughs> I, now this is the part I want to talk about Ryan a little bit. 
Can you can you elaborate without it being because it was a piece together? Can you just elaborate a little bit? Let me elaborate. So the video originally was um, a black woman asking, basically in general, why do white people like adopting black children? Um, whatever a white man decides to respond, saying he asked specifically, why is it? black kids that need to always be adopted. That's not the part of the message that I was trying to get at. What I was trying to get at was where he went on and said, it shouldn't matter about the colors because when it's an infant, and I'm not sure exactly if he said um, when it's a child in need, but basically that was the message that it shouldn't matter the colors or whatever. If a child needs to be adopted, I believe, he believes apparently that they should just be adopted. This is before innocence and ignorance. That, that video was taken the beginning, just the beginning, where the lady asked the question and you see my facial expression and then the end combined, literally. And that, not the middle, where we're clearly explaining the whole thing. Um, and then about the colored situation, now I found out that day, which is why I deleted that video, apparently saying that is like saying the ER. That I did not know and was not raised knowing. In school, outside, everywhere by black people by latino all that this is how we address each other here and that and that is and that That's is my respectful point. way so i was that is, there and i could admit that you know if it is wrong, i can admit that but you know i in that sense i was not trying to disrespect nobody there so when it came to the racist thing i'm like i thought i'm being respectful okay so and now that's the whole, and that's black. And that's the whole thing in, in a nutshell. That's what, what the video encompasses, Ryan. It encompasses you doing things without the appropriate knowledge or education behind doing them. When well, I was I telling when I was, when I was let me finish, let me finish, let me finish. When I was asked, when I was earlier suggesting that you apologize, you deflected it and you made it about you. You made it about your appearance. I'm a whole transgender woman. I, said, I went well, through, apologize I went, for appropriate. I went, hold on. I went through a gender queer phase. Why the hell would I tell you not not to be gender nonconforming? That that doesn't make sense. If I'm advocating for trans people, why would I have an issue with somebody who's gender nonconforming? If you knew if if you knew my platform and what I stand for, and Maddie knows this, I date other queer people. I date other gender nonconforming people. I'm not a hetero adjacent heteronormative kinds of girl. Honey, I passed by accident because of genetics, baby. But what I was suggesting, and you were, you were apologizing, it it wasn't specifically about the nails. I was suggesting I was suggesting that I was suggesting that you apologize and educate yourself on the history of transphobia, homophobia, and racism in this country. And you just made a clear example. You didn't know that saying colored. You didn't grow up. Thinking that this was a thing, blah, blah, blah. That's what I meant earlier when I said you clarified it like that. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. I'm story. not done. I'm not done. Now that you have a platform, you have a responsibility. You have you have a responsibility if you're going to talk about sensitive topics regarding race. If you're going to talk about topics regarding trans people, then you have a responsibility to educate yourself on them, especially with you being somebody who doesn't identify as trans and who's not seen in the world as black. Me personally, I would stay away from those conversations because what do you really have to say? For ex and, and for example, with the whole, um, the guy, the white guy talking about adopting black children, you didn't do your due diligence. You didn't know where that video came from. You seen, you complain about me showing snippets. Those were purposeful snippets of you being microaggressive. I only had to show a few seconds for people to understand things that you have said multiple times, right? But for example, I'm going to use the the white the white parents adopting black children. That stems from a white man saying that he was not going to raise his black children, educating them on blackness or allowing people to educate them on the history of racism. He essentially said that he was intending to raise Black kids with no awareness of Blackness. One of the things that the girl responded to that video said, the girl who you refer to as being um, a loud Black girl in the video that you, another video that you deleted, the girl who was responding 
she wasn't just talking about white people shouldn't adopt black children. Even I don't believe that. I've considered adopt, adopting children of, of various races. I don't care about the race of my child as far as what color they are. But if I adopt a child that doesn't look like me, I know that that child isn't going to go in the world and have the same experience that I have. Therefore, I'm going to have to educate them on their culture and I'm going to have to educate myself. And that's the only point that I'm making. If you're going to talk about black people, if you're going to talk about trans people, educate yourself. Because ultimately, like Maddie and Craig talked about in the last live and like they mentioned today, Project 2025 is real. This election is really serious that we have coming up. And while you worried about making cis hetero people comfortable in bathrooms, you are looking, we're going to be in a dictatorship where you're not going to be allowed to wear those nails, honey. Yeah. I mean, that's the belief. So but. listen, I think again, here's the thing, what I think that we need to do in this conversation, because I because I got to get to the, to this to my last thing. Ryan, yesterday, yeah. I, I instead of hearing you, I cussed you out. I apologize for that. And I apologize for what I said too. It's great. That's 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 what we I instead of hearing you, I, I didn't see the inbox. Had I had I seen the inbox, Thank it wouldn't you. have got in the space. But I just want to say that as a grown person, as a grown up, I can say I cussed you out. And as an elder, I know I joked the other day and said, I ain't no fucking elder, but I know that we are older than you. We are, we have you by 20 years. Yes. At least. Yes. And so I care about you just because you're a young queer person, right? Mm -hmm. And because you're a young queer person of color. And if you've ever watched this show, I consistently say that. I have no, no issue against white folks, but I feel like I have to kind of take brown and black and brown queer people under my arms, under my wings, because there wasn't anybody there for me to do that, right? And I just feel like we have to protect each other and we have to kind of guide your generation because th this we can't keep passing this same damaged torch. Mm -hmm. I want to pass you something different. I feel like the world should be different because I've been here. I feel like your experience with the queer community and the community at large should be different because we've li we lived, because we did some work for you. And then when it's your turn, you do the same thing for the people behind you. Yeah. So this is not about reading and all of that stuff. So I appreciate you and Bino for how he came on. I know he came on a little hot, he was you know, good yeah, but he was good too. You know what I mean? So we don't always have to agree. We don't, we don't have to always agree. I, I just think that, I think that if we can calm down a bit, yeah. If we all, as LBG, I'm talking about you, Bree. If we can calm down a bit, because Bree was hot too. Now Bree was hot. <laughs> bitch. If I we can, if, I'm sorry, I was triggered. I feel if we can calm down a bit, <laughs> and instead of calling each other out, we call each other in. Mm. Mm. We can mm. make some changes in our community. You understand right. what I'm saying? We if and, and so. In, in the times of when we feel that we need to call each other out, let's take a moment first and try to call each other in and say, hey, sis, let me get let me sit you down and educate you a little bit. You know, and this is why I have evolved. So because y'all it even though with me being hot tempered, hot headed, puss ass, all that, I still take moments to go in and reflect mm -hmm. and say, all right, Maddie, maybe you could have had a different approach with this. Or, all right, Maddie, right. Uh, I didn't know enough to say things about this. So let me go and, and see and then come back. I'm not too big to be tapped on the shoulder. Right. And, and I just think that we need to call each other in because we are queer people. And we need each other now more than any other time especially with Project 2025 on the horizon. We need each other now more than anybody. And so I would I would love to put us in a group chat and we bring it down to at least five and be like, all right, you know that he's young, Bree. You're a psychologist. You're black. Are you uh, black or brown, mixed, whatever. I'm black. He, <laughs> he, he Puerto Rican. He Rican, God damn it. I think that if he's going to occupy mm -hmm. spaces, we all need to, as people that have mm -hmm. influence, we, we need to be 
grasping the problem at hand. We're not the problem. We can make the problem. We have platforms and influences that we can we can spread the knowledge out as much as we can. And I think again, we need to call each other in. Right. So Ryan, I'm gonna put us in the group chat. Me, you, me, you, fairy puss. I'm and here we for it, Ryan. I'm okay. here for it. And so this for it way, we can like when Ryan getting on his thing and he has an opinion about the stuff, he'd be like, hold on before right. I make a Wait, thought. I feel like sometimes. We're not always going to agree on everything, but that's we right. can see yeah. each, other, each other's perspectives, and that's fine. And we can agree to disagree sometimes. Mm -hmm. it's Tell that to the people in the comments that be trying to I'm eat me up, Ryan. No, the people in the comments, F them. It, it is <laughs> what it is. The, the, I feel like, you know, we could agree to disagree, and we can always, you know, learn from each other's experiences. We can learn. You have outlooks. I have outlooks. And I'm not saying we both right. We could both be wrong. Or we, yeah. This is just us, our life, and our our experiences that led us to here. Some people are ignorant though and don't want to open up the talk. You know, I'm open. Yeah. It's just sometimes I'm a little loud and sometimes I'm a little, so you know, sometimes you get in the heat. Honey, it's but the bro, it's, it's, that, the, it's the New York in you, girl. It's the New York in right. you. It's the New York in you, girl. It gets misconstrued from, and this is before, I, you know, TikTok, Instagram, all that. And so I, there's something I know about myself. I just be needing to sometimes, you know, calm down a little bit, listen. Same. Yeah. Me too. Me too. All right. So, so to end this off, I'm going to group chat us and we're going to all reintroduce ourselves to each other. And then we can be like glad due to all of us that get TV shows, the gay police to each other. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay. I'm with it. <laughs> all right. So I, don't, I, don't, I don't rule in on that. The fags don't rule in on that. <laughs> we're going to do a continuous on Let's this game. All right, thank you for All coming, right. Ryan. Thanks for joining Bye. us. Thank you for joining Bye. us. Thank That's you so, so much. I, and listen, y'all, make sure y'all follow my folks. And we're gonna re, we're gonna repeat this again. Okay. All right, love Bye. you guys. All right. All right. So we come to the final thing. Mm -hmm. What Mo? I just had to say one thing. Yes. Y'all were incorrect on one thing. What we what? was incorrect about? We say nothing about Africa. No, but y'all did say something about being twenty years older than him. I'm not. I'm, I'm 11. Sweetie, you're 40. <laughs> Sweetheart, you're 40. That's a baby compared to you, honey. He's that young. You're not. Correct.